Hello everyone, my name is Steven Zapata. I'm a concept artist, illustrator, online art teacher, and former instructor at Art Center College of Design. I would like to introduce you to my new drawing course, Form from Imagination, a course designed to help you draw with confidence from your mind. Maybe you want to be a professional illustrator or designer. Maybe you want to be a master with a pencil. Or maybe you just want to be the best artist that you can be. Beautiful goals, but it's not always clear how to improve the work that you do from imagination. Over the past six months, I've taken all of the little eurekas, tips, and essential exercises that gave me confidence drawing from my mind and compiled them into a sequential course. We start with the absolute foundations, covering the scientific nature of light and shadow, how to hatch, how to create flat tones, how to render spheres and cubes. And step by step, we move through combined shapes, complex shapes, organic shapes. We cover how to simplify extremely complex subjects like the head into basic shapes so that you can handle them more easily from your head. We look at how to understand and treat details. And by the end of these 14 chapters with over 50 video lessons, you'll be ready to do complex designs from your mind with fidelity and energy. And all the demos are done in pencil on paper, so you can do all of the assignments even if you don't have a fancy digital art setup. But I also have demos, instructions, and modifications to the assignments for those who do want to do them digitally. Here's how it works. Go to formfromimagination.com and sign up for the course. Download the assignment book and start watching the lectures. Do the assignments at your own pace. Take your time with them and use this self-study to develop your patience. When you're done, post your assignments in the exclusive community hub and I'll personally critique your work with drawovers, diagrams, and advice. I want you to know this course is no joke just because it's online. It is challenging content and it is more complete than it would be if I was teaching this class at an art college as I have before. If I was teaching this class in person at Art Center today, I would just play these videos in class, knowing full well that they're the most concise, focused, edited, step-by-step -step way to convey the material. So I'm serious when I say, this course isn't just a substitute for a college level course, it's better than a college level course. And you don't have to pay thousands of dollars per credit and wind up hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. So thank you for checking out the course. Thank you for watching this and for your support. And thank you for drawing and making your artwork. The world needs it. I'll see you soon.
The year is 87.039, new non-linear time. It's been 50,000 years since Stephen Zapata's final art stream, but we still live in a golden age defined by the gifts his stream bestowed upon mankind. Faster than light travel, eternal life, Stephen cloning, and the keys to a truly galactic human civilization. My name is Stave Satipaz, a reminder clone of Stephen Zapata an exact reproduction of his personality as constructed by an AI compiling millions of hours of his original art streams. By all accounts, I'm exactly like the original Steven's public persona, just more muscular, exactly as he would have wanted. I travel the stars on my light tracer, a dream of Steven. My crew is, of course, all clones of Steven. Some of my officers are reminders like me, but not all. Some are bio-clones, and yet others are aspectoids, clones who, instead of trying to capture his full essence, amplify a particular portion of the original Steven's personality. We've spent hundreds of years drawing, exploring, and philosophizing while snaking our way through the stars, spreading the good word of design. But we've had another secret mission as we've cruised the cosmos. We. I. Seek information on the legendary originals, Stephen Zapata's true drawings that he flung wide across the stars at the end of his life on Earth, never to be seen again. My crew thinks I'm looking for them for the same reason all the other madmen do, because they would be valuable beyond all reason. But they don't know what I know, that a critical mass of originals in the hands of a trained reminder can provide a psychic link to the original Stephen mind. Once I collect enough, I'll be able to fulfill my destiny and achieve psychological continuity with the original Stephen. And through me, he will live again to usher in golden ages of art forever. Drawing Ascendant, The Eternal Chronicles of Stephen Zapata. Lasting Legacy 1, Epic 1. We live in a golden age. We really do. You're living in a golden age right now because you're living in a time when I'm making art and talking about it. So I feel very, very lucky, uh, or you should feel very lucky, and I feel very happy for you. I mean, what great fortune it is for you that I'm around and thinking about art and just giving out for free my incredible insights so that you don't have to work for them. Very, very good time for you to be an artist, you know, so low effort for you. It's like you barely have to do anything. I'm thinking it, I'm thinking it all through for you, this is great. Hello, everybody. Hello, Mr. Grinch. Hello, my good friend, Modern Day James. Hello, Marta Diaz. Hello, Hubs Junkyard. Hello, KC. Hello, Rappy. Hello, Battle, Battle Ready Babe. That's a good handle. Hello, Felix Sembach. Hello, Lo-Fi Sketches. Hello, Basic Syphilis 8. Good morning, good morning, good morning. We're drawing, we're sketching. We're having a fun. Here we go. We're streaming. I've already been drawing for a bit today. I've already been drawing for an hour and 35 minutes today. I started this today over my morning coffee and here we go. We're continuing it. Hi everybody. I can't believe there's a 14B pencil. Yeah, well, you know, it, it doesn't actually feel, I think after a certain point, I think really after 6B, you really can't tell much of a difference between a, an 8B and a 14B. Like, I think it might be a, I'm gonna go ahead and say it's probably a branding thing for the most part. You really can't tell much of a difference. Let me make sure I'm in focus here. My, my, Vivid Plus. This drawing's just a little glassy gray right now, so it's not the highest contrast. Hello, Luna. Luna. Did you ever know all I want is Luna? I am so ready for Luna. Whoa, oh, oh. whoa, oh. I have to adjust my gain for my singing. Whoa, oh, oh. Whoa. Just clipped into the yellow right there. Just clipped into the yellow right there. Another day, another drawing. Another entry into the great annals of art history. Another drawing that will surely 
be displayed in the permanent collection of the Metropolitan Museum of Art in the official Stephen Zapata drawing wing. It is both named in my honor and exclusively displays my artwork, you know. Not even really something we have to question. We just know that's the way things are going to go, and we're just making sure that that glorious time is all the more um, glorious. See, my camera is sticking out of my little mask for it. You see it there? You see it? It's loading. Right, right there? There it is. I got out of the mask. I got to push it. That. Ah. Oh. Uh, well, maybe I should just adjust the mask because I kind of want to draw a little bit choked up today. Hey, Steven! Damiano Cherry! What's up? Let me see if I close this. Nope, that's no good. Maybe if I shuffle it. Nope, I'll shuffle it that way. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's just a little... Mm-hmm. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh there we go. And we're all above board. So go ahead, draw, dream, allow yourself to be joyful if you can. Draw whatever you want, draw freely. You know, today's the only day you know you have. Keep it fun. Hello, Oster. Greetings from Italy? Well, greetings from New York City. Thanks for being here. Love Italy. Hope you're having a good time over there. And that is a very artistic and beautiful place, I'll tell you what. Which pencil you using? This is the Pitt Graphite Matte 14B. But uh, I've only just started using it. I've done everything you see so far. Most of this is done with that. It's the 0.5 mechanical pencil, my favorite tool. I'm just using the 14B now to darken the shadows because the whole drawing is a little glassy. The shadow shapes are extremely gray. Just want to get them down darker, increase the contrast of the drawing overall. But then once I do that, I'll go back to the H. Uh, HP. Oh, you live in Florence. Man, I was in Florence last year. One of my favorite places in the world, I'll tell you what. Art is everywhere. And yeah, it's mostly churches, but it's like, that's what art was back then. It's like, it's churches filled with Caravaggio paintings. I mean, it's not... It's, uh, it's not what you would normally think of as, oh, this is just a church, you know? It's the high-level stuff, the real deal. Oh, it's the real deal, baby. Oh, yeah! It's the real deal. Sorry, it's early, so feeling a little bit punchy. I'm already a little bit drawing drunk since I've already been drawing a bunch this morning. I just like had to ravenously tear into it as soon as I woke up. Yes, give me all the art. Just a quick note because I can't hear you, but it's always reassuring to have a desktop Zapata chipping away at stuff in the corner of my screen or in another tab. Aw, thank you so much, Ben Hillman.
happy to contribute, happy to be your little corner of the screen gremlin, your by turns encouraging, discouraging, calm, angry art gremlin. I am a universe, I contain multitudes. Hey Steven, I'm in deep love with your just drawn don't worry painting. I like the time lamps, but it jumps around a bit. Would you consider posting the real time footage, maybe a private video? I don't have that anymore. Th those real time footages take up so much space that um, unfortunately I just don't have a, a ecosystem where I can keep the real time footages reliably. So I I've cleared that from my hard drives a while ago. It's just, I, I record those in pretty high res and they take a long time. So like the real time footage for a painting like that is like probably somewhere between like 300 and 500 gigabytes of footage. It's like, I really just can't hold on to that stuff for the most part. Maybe someday. If money is uh, not an issue someday, I'll uh, just get some crazy server set up and I'll just save the raw versions of everything forever. No, says Tim. Is form from imagination for teenagers? For teenagers? What do you mean? What do you mean by for teenagers? You mean like for beginners? People can be beginners at art at any time. But um, yes, it's appropriate for beginners, if that's what you mean. I don't think, uh, I don't think art content in general is generally gated by, um, by age. I think it's just gated by um, experience. And it's not even, I mean, most of it isn't gated. It's just uh, recommended for different levels of experience. Ben Enemy with the three Canadian dollars. Thank you so much, Ben Enemy. Yo, drawing too. Good morning, y'all. I'm glad you're drawing, Ben Enemy. Thank you so much for the three dollar donation. That's extremely kind. Ben Enemy, you're very kind to me, Ben Enemy. Thanks for the three buckarini, Rodley do. Thanks, Ben. Yeah, when I get happy, I have to sing. I just got to. Hi, Steven. Happy new sketch. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Eonut. Eonut. You're very kind. I hope your drawing is happy and new today as well. What are you sketching? Can't you tell? It's a beautiful, kinky anime cat girl. You know, it needs some work. It's gonna come along, but yeah, I mean, that's what I'm going for. Beautiful, kinky anime cat girl.
Apparently, according to one of my six-year-old students, drawing is only for kids. Well, they're gonna they're gonna make an excellent banker one day, and um, well, I'd uh, I'd stay close because uh, maybe they can lend you some money someday. <laughs> They have all the money. Okay. They have all the money and they hate art. I told him I drew at home when I'm not teaching, and he said, don't lie to me. <laughs> uh, right from the mouth of babes. That's awesome. That is so funny. <laughs> don't lie to me. I feel like if they ever remake the film Society and don't hire you as a concept designer, it's gonna suck. Um, well, prepare for suckage. I'm not in the union, so I can't design for films. It's a very binary thing. You're, uh, you're either in the union or you ain't, so. It's gonna have to be somebody like me, or somebody other than me. And if I did design for it, it would need to be kept very secret and I could not get my name in the credits. I would have to go uncredited. Or else they'll put the rat outside. For real, the abstract art in banks and insurance companies are just the worst. Feels bad. Yeah, well, that's what. <sighs> it's just the state of the world right now. In general, bankers hating art. That's a trope I've never seen. You'll see. Whoa. My green screen is glitching out. Give me a second, I gotta adjust my filters. My shirt is becoming transparent. There we go, that's all right. That's close enough. In general, how much experience is needed to master the art? Mm, mm, very complex question. Very, very complex question. It depends what kind of art you want to do. It depends what your goals are. It w it's going to vary from artist to artist. But um, I think as a general rule, I'd say three times longer than you think. 
If you think it's 10,000 hours, I can promise you it'll be 30,000 hours. <laughs> When I opened this video and saw the drawn face, I immediately had to mimic it. Mirror neurons are funny. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. 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 How do you feel about rich people using art for tax evasion? I don't, I mean, what won't they use for tax evasion? Like it, it's not a, I don't care about that. They're, the fact that they do it with art is just a symptom of the fact that they'll take any opportunity to do it with anything. But you know, at least, at least there's people like me in the world who will pay their taxes. Keep this whole sorry system afloat. If bankers hate art, what is hanging on their office walls? Pictures of bags of money. You guys have clearly never met bankers. All the bankers I know openly disparage me, my pursuits, and my concerns for the souls of artists directly to my face. My, my, um, my, my comments about them are based on, uh, whoa, what, what's the phrase? Personal prejudice? Yeah, I think that's it, personal experience and prejudice. Don't let them fool you. They low. This is a uh, more elaborate version of this idea that we worked up on stream a few streams ago. Why is my setup so dark? Hold on, I gotta, I'm gonna boost my lights. I think my lights are down dim. Hi, Steven, any, uh, whoa, whoa, I'm behind here. Oh wait, now I, bl now I blew out my camera. I got lower that. Is that still, I, I think the drawing's just very low contrast right now and I need to accept that. 
Um, hi, Stephen. Any advice to older adults who just picked up drawing? The early stages of learning and progression are so slow. It's fun, but man, my drawings blow, huh? Just don't worry that they're bad. They're supposed to be bad. Um, you're, I mean, one of the reasons you respect drawing and want to do it well and love it is because you get that it's hard, that it's impressive and important that the skill can be manifest on the surface, right? So don't ever forget that. Like you need to accept that it's supposed to be hard. You wouldn't want to do it if there wasn't something to be refined, something to be built up, something interesting about making the progression. It's the same way that you don't, you know, it is the same as a video game on some level where it's just like if a game's too, like, well, a game can be interesting for its story, but let's say in a gameplay-focused game, if it's not challenging, there's only so long you'll want to do it, right? So it's the same thing with drawing. So don't forget that it's supposed to be hard. Just accept it. Accept that they're going to be bad. You have to start somewhere. And uh, if you were good right off the bat, you, you'd quit. You wouldn't be interested. Ask yourself if you are watching Schoolism a lot, if you're attending all the talks, conventions such as Lightbox Expo or Comic-Con, you will never be a concept artist, said Feng Zhu. Well, I mean, if you're not drawing. I mean, if you're, if you're actively drawing a lot and you're doing all those things, of course, you'll, you know, pull off whatever you're going for, forget concept art. But yeah, if you're, if you're using those things to avoid actually drawing, well, that's always going to be a problem, always going to be a problem. Hello, Nick, how are you? Do you think independent and industrial art as market will cease to exist with AI? Stop using them. <laughs> Don't use them, my God, what are you all thinking? What are you all thinking? Jesus. My God, I wish this was all gone, it sucks. I know I'm gonna lose friends over this stuff, make enemies, I know it's ripe grounds for accusations of hypocrisy and all that, but it's just like, what are you doing? Stop using them. <laughs> the AIs are abominations. They're sins against nature and all humanitarian values. Who the hell are you working for? What, what is this all for? It's not like, it's not, it's not like automating other things. It's art. It's the thing we like doing. Why automate that one? Who is this serving? Stop using them. They're obviously stupid. It's obviously a bad idea. It obviously disgraces you and the nature of art and there's no good outcome on the other side of it. Stop it. Burn it to the ground. Fuck them. Hate those stupid things. Oh my God, who the hell is that? The real Steven Zapata, very verified. Why does the excellent sing singing reminder clone think he is the original? Has no one told you yet? I hate to be the one to break it to you. Look, you're not gonna, you're not gonna ever undermine my certainty that I am the original Steven mind. And the consciousness that is occurring right now, what it feels like to be me is the real deal, baby. No simulation, no simulacra, but the genuine article. You will find yourself to be the doubter. You will always be lost in the labyrinth of your own confusion, but I, I will always be steadfast, strong, certain that I hold the original Steve in mind. Also, you're crazy. Do, 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 do. Hey, 
Hey, Steven, I always love seeing you stream. It makes me want to paint or be creative in any other way. Yeah! I also admire your dedication to drawing, doing it every day. That's something I can't do. Well, you don't have to do it every day. You know, I don't do it every day. You know, I've, as time has gone on, I'm much more comfortable taking break days and just, you know, there's also just realities to being an artist. There's a lot of other things I need to do, you know? I do do some form of art every day. I don't, I don't necessarily get to sketch like this every day now. You know, for example, some days, uh, the only drawing I do is doing, um, like feedback for my course and stuff like that, doing diagrams. It's like, that's still making art, you know, it's just, uh, not, um, not this, not generative. It's, uh, you know, art direction and fixing problems and things like that. There's plenty of stuff like that. Being good right off the bat, making people quit would seem to be the surest, most logical argument against the Frazetta story of him picking up art and mastering anatomy in a day, right? That, that's just, that, that story is so openly myth-making, like so openly fallacious that it barely deserves scrutiny. <laughs> I mean, it's so obviously silly and not true. It's like, if Frazetta's talents were based on anything like that, there would be a billion Frazettas. It's just so openly fallacious, it's silly. He might have done it. He might have sloppily copied those anatomy books in one night, but by definition, that sort of proves that that meant nothing, that it was just a stunt. But more likely than not, he didn't even do it. It's just some story he told. Like, who's that that sculptor, the one who had the Netflix documentary recently? Uh, the guy who did the does the surrealist sculptures, he got real hot and popular after that Netflix documentary. Like, his story that he learned anatomy from dissecting his father's cadaver. Like, <laughs> so, oh, so obviously, someone who has mastered the... Um, mastered the art of myth making and making yourself interesting so that people care about you as an artist but to anyone with a lick of sense uh that's clearly openly fallacious and silly yeah Steven, as a fellow sci-fi fan, would let us change the Butlerian Jihad to Zapata's Jihad? No, I mean, any war against the AIs that I would advocate for would be from the same, um, from the same principles. So you could still call it a, a Butlerian Jihad. I'm, I'm, I mean, the Butlerian Jihad is a reference to Samuel Butler, who years and many years ago, when was Samuel Butler around? Mid 1800s, early 1900s? When was he writing? really long time ago, he was totally prescient on automation making humans uh, irrelevant uh, with no real reason to stop unless you accept humanist values. Um, he nailed it. That's why the, I'm pretty sure that's why it's called the Butlerian Jihad in, in Dune. It's a reference to Samuel Butler. And it's the same thing, you know, I, I just, uh, I agree with him across the board, so you'd call it the same thing. I'm digging this drawing, sir. Thank you, Reynola. I get little moments of being able to draw on the form, feeling like I can sculpt into the paper. It's amazing. But the next day, my marks are awful and wrong. What's up with that BS? Well, the, the feeling is the North Star. You want to cultivate that feeling. That feeling is, that's the real drug in art. That's the good stuff. Um, my course form from imagination really... Uh, prioritizes achieving that feeling um, as you go through it. I think it's super important. Um, but just because you feel that way 
doesn't mean you're going to make perfect drawings. It tends to help because you really connect with the drawings, but it doesn't mean you're going to make perfect drawings, but you can't give up on the feeling. Um, that feeling is born from drinking your own Kool-Aid on a really intense level, from believing the thing you are crafting. But your mark making is still, it's still going to be functionally controlled by um, the amount of practice that you have, experience with certain uh, muscle movements and iconic, or not iconic, but shapes that you have developed deep relationship with and understanding for. So those things are still going to improve. It's not like having that strange experience is a guarantee that you're going to make the best drawing you could or anything like that. Um, so just keep rolling with it, but never lose that feeling. Always prioritize that feeling. Nick says, I became an artist after living next to a glue factory and huffing those sweet mind opening vapors every day. Within a dream, Buddha, Jesus, Muhammad revealed my true path to me. Yeah, that, that's how, there's been plenty of artists throughout history with a tendency to talk about themselves that way. And it's not gonna stop because, um, well, I mean, the proof is in the pudding. People believe that stupid crap Frazetta said about himself. So it works, it's just, you know, People are very credulous. You could say whatever you want and someone's gonna believe it. That's just how people work. So, and people believe what they want to believe. People want to believe somebody as skillful as Frazetta has something magical like that in their past. We want to believe those things. And in art, nobody cares and nobody understands art or very few people understand art on a deep level. So it's just easy to believe that. And so people do. This is why I like your streams. I show up to hear Steven sing, draw, sing first. Let's get the priorities straight. People are here for my singing first, drawing second, and then learn about random authors I've never heard of. Yeah. I guess, you know. It's not like I'm widely read or anything, but. Learning to draw is a slow progression of daily peaks and valleys. If you zoom out over a year, it's an improvement. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Hello, Pedro, how are you? John Johnson says, hey, Stephen, I think you once said that the reason you learned to draw is for communion with God. Do you think you could elaborate on that? Um, it would take a very long time to elaborate on that. Um, I think in some sense, my YouTube channel is my elaboration on that. If you go back to the early videos and listen to, um, especially the drawing meditation series, which kicked off the channel. Um, if you listen to all that nested in there, um, it is sort of secretly about that. So um, it's not for everybody. You know, art practices are highly individual. You wouldn't agree with my opinion on what it means to commune with God, or at least, you know, it's unlikely that you would. It's just uh, that word has a lot of baggage and things like that and includes a lot of suppositions and it quickly turns into a fight of like, well, if that's what you mean by God, then that's no God, sir, you know, things like that. But um, yeah, for me, that's, that's what it's about. But it, it would be extremely complicated to try to elaborate on that in some sort of short, pithy thing. Um, if, if I had to defile it with a gross simplification, I would point at, um, I, I, I resonate a lot with someone like a, like a Spinoza or something like that, who um, finds God to be so deeply ingrained in every tiny earthy thing, accept that as an axiom. And then I personally have found the act of drawing to be the most direct connection biomechanically between myself, a different person might disagree, but for me, the act of drawing is the most direct connection to the nature of that very earthy stuff um, and allows the time, the quiet, and the contemplation to honor these things, which range widely, things like visual perception, um, feelings of form, um, 
questions and genuine curiosity about why the world presents the way it does. It allows the quiet, the space, the time, and the openness to interface with those things directly or thoughtfully or to really um, just moves you, allows you to transcend the sort of commonplace utilitarian way that we view those things. Um, and therein open a doorway to Well, it seems foolish to try to put into words what is on the other side of the doorway. Um, it would probably be damaging to put images there on the other side. But that's just for me. You just want to draw cute anime girls go right ahead. <laughs> I mean, everyone gets the practice they want. That's just why I like it. And when I veer away from those things, I feel lost, sad, confused, and diffused. Confused and diffused. And when I reorient myself and move back towards those things, my life feels like it makes sense. I feel aligned again. If someone got stuck on a desert island with only a pencil, a stack of notebooks, and all the supplies they required to live, what would you suggest they draw to improve? <laughs> Asking for a friend? What options do you have? Draw what's on the draw what's on the island. Draw coconuts. I got nothing for you. I mean, very strange situation to be in. Draw what's on the island and then draw what's in your mind. Draw, draw a rescue ship. See if you can conjure it. Make it as vivid in detail as possible. I think that Frazetta myth should be more about the... I think that Frazetta myth should be more about the motivation for drawing, to be willing to copy that whole book and not be good in one day. Well, that would be nice, but, you know, not everybody is very strong on metaphor or nice little, um, nice little Zen games like that. I mean, the myth as constructed, people just take literally. They just believe it. They think it's real. Draw a face on a volleyball, yeah. Nick says, is this why you like William Blake besides the cool art and poetry? Because his approach to art was also out of an outlook at God the divine? Yeah, I mean, that contributes. I mean, the art is definitely... Um, well, the art would be enough on its own for me, but um, it's hard to imagine that he could have got at, to that art without that background outlook. I mean, I love how far out his beliefs were. You know, my, um, my fetish is stuff people really believe. How, how far out have people gone um, in what they accept and what they believe? I don't believe much. 
personally. So I really get excited by, that doesn't mean I agree with them, right? In fact, I often find myself laughing at them, but um, I, uh, I love, I love, almost as an art form, people's certainty and how far out belief can go. It's such a beautiful thing. I'm more of a mystified by the mystery of it all kind of a guy. And I'm very slow to say definitive things about anything. Stephen, have you even met Ian McCaig? I have not, unfortunately. I've listened to a lot of his talks and uh, his, um, his old Nomon videos were common companions throughout long nights uh, back in college. I used to play them over and over again while pulling all-nighters. in my freezing bedroom, creating stacks and stacks of drawings. The real Stephen Zapata, very verified, says, The more one claims to know about God, the less they are likely to know. Why not choose a different word? Knowing the perception of what the word God implies has been destroyed by religion for most. Good morning, Donnie. Will you do any drawing challenge for October? Nah, I'm not big on challenges. I'm on a very long-term challenge called Do a Hundred Pictures You Care About Before You Die, You Fool. That's the only challenge I'm interested in. Does the chat know, do you need any software to stream to YouTube, like OBS, or is it all done in their creative studio? You need OBS, yeah, or another streaming software. I don't think, 
Actually, I think you can if you stream from your phone, now that I think about it. I think if you, if you do it from your phone, you can go live just from your phone, but if you wanna do it from your desktop, I think you need a, an outside streaming software. Now I'm doubting myself. If anyone knows, give them an answer. How many out of the 100 have you done? Maybe six. Omar says, yo, do the funny thing. I'm not your clown, Omar. I'm not going to do the funny thing on command. He's talking about the uh, country yokel has too much knowledge about H.P. Lovecraft while speaking to the detectives who are looking for information on these arcane occurrences bit. Even you are what we would would call what we could call a master. Are you still trying to improve, Jesus? I, I don't. I mean, yes, I am still trying to improve. Um, I don't know. I, I I don't feel like a master. I know I have stuff I can teach. I know that um. I know that uh, I have facility and skill, but um. You know, it always feels the same way. You know, I don't know how else to put it. Like, you're, you know, the gates to despair and confusion and dissatisfaction are, are as open as they ever were. It's just, um, it's actually the, the mental warfare that I've gotten better at over the years more than anything else. You know, I'm just, it's, it's not my skills that prevent me from sinking into those things. It's, um it's my changed relationship with them and getting better at handling myself as an artist. Um, I am still actively trying to improve. I mean, I, I mean, if you're an artist, it's like one of the reasons I think that you are an artist and you feel compelled by it is that um, you, um, you can always imagine something better, right? So that ability of mine has only increased with my knowledge and with my increased acuity of visual perception and imagination. So I think something's wrong if you reach a point where you can't imagine better things, you know? Steven, sometimes I fear the idea of not having an identity. I fear the idea of not having an identity as an artist and that my work is an extension of the style of other artists that inspired me. Well, that's a bit of a two-edged sword because the truth is that it is worrisome to not have an identity. I can't put that in no other kind of nicer way. It's, it's a problem and with... Um, certain things on the horizon it will only be more of a problem <laughs> so um it is an issue and um but there's nothing wrong with your work being an extension of the style of other artists that inspired you that's not um 
See, I don't think that's actually the root of that problem. The root of feeling like you don't have an identity as an artist is usually not that you're copying people who inspire you too much. That's actually pretty wholesome, generally. That's good, and, and they're, you're in a, a deep and legacied and historied way for artists to commune with each other across yawning gaps of time and space, which is nice. The, the problem that's more often at the root of not having an identity is that you haven't actively burrowed down. Like you don't know what you like, what you're trying to say, what, why you connect with certain themes and not others. Um, that's usually what's actually at the root of that. Um, and I think that that's where you would want to look. Like, I, I don't think you'll solve that problem by sort of self-consciously and in a very affected way trying to shrug off the influences of people you like. You know, I don't think that's going to do it. I think it's a, it's a journey inward. You need to develop a deeper relationship with what the hell you like about art. And then that will give you answers pretty quickly about um, what a unique vision for you would look like and feel like. I forgot the question I was about to ask. I thought that was the question. Steven, do you think creativity can be improved with training and practice? How? Despite getting better, I feel like not having anything to say or ideas in general. Um, exposure and, and effort. Um, maybe you practice skills for too long in an abstract way and you let, your, you let the part of your mind that was connecting with what kinds of pictures you wanted to make atrophy. Common problem. Stop practicing skills. Go... Turn off everything. Turn off ArtStation, uninstall Instagram, stop looking at everybody else's stuff for a while, right? You'll still carry your influences with you and everything like that, but stop looking at so much stuff which you probably react to by with a spasmodic reaction that just says, oh, I gotta render as good as they do. Like just that's very low hanging fruit. Stop looking at all that stuff so that your mind forgets that you are a competitor and returns to its neutral state where it is an art lover and someone who desires to see beautiful art. Starve yourself of beautiful art so that the only option left to see any is for you to make it. And then that will often jumpstart your brain into wanting to make the kinds of pictures you wish you could see. And that's where you want to be as an artist. That's, that's the sweet spot, you know? Omar A says, Stephen, do you use an under-desk fan? Why, Omar? To fan my sweaty balls? Is that what you're implying, Omar? <laughs> you scandalous little wretch. <laughs> Let me tell you what. I've got a six fan set up over here. And it's all pointed right into my crotch. <laughs> Psychopath. What's wrong with you, Omar? Who asks questions like that? Fucking loon. You freaking loon. You're an insane loon. Sorry that the stream went completely not safe for work now. Now we're on the other side of the not safe for work barrier. Now I can just say disgusting things. That's what we do here, folks. Rapidly oscillate from philosophy to ball jokes. Just like an oscillating fan. That's what we do here. Just like my fans oscillate between loving me and hating me. Would we have it any other way? The real Steven came out, that is all. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is the real me.
Let me sort of uh, rapid fire answer some of these questions. This guy's the master of describing form. Thank you very much. Hey, when you are drawing, do you feel like it is like it's your prayer or like you are committed with prayer and the Lord? Sure. Yeah, sometimes. A lot of the time. How do you build your visual library? You got to look at a lot of stuff and draw a lot of stuff. There's no, there's no method to it. It's just you need to connect with things that you like, be educated by life, be amazed by life. You should go out in the world and view it as a psychedelic panoply of unbelievable forms that you never could have imagined and commit them to memory with quick sketches or loving trance-like admiration, whatever fits your uh, personal temperament, and it'll slowly build up. You just got to really be, you know, and don't care about what other people like. You got to figure out what you like, the kind of stuff you like, you know? Half of artists would tell me I shouldn't build my visual library of disgusting things like this, right? And here we, but here we are, right? You're all watching me on the, on the internet. I, an abject failure, uh, you're all watching me draw this stuff. So who wins, you know? Look who's laughing now. <laughs> I wonder who would be almost a master, where do we draw that line? Or it's just if a person wants to call you a master at your craft, it's the opinion of the people or the masses. I mean, I, I think that's what it is. Like, you know, like I said, like if someone, when people in the chat and stuff like that call me a master of drawing, it's like, it's very sweet, but it lands as irrelevant when you've been doing this for as long as I have. Like it doesn't, that doesn't mean anything. I read that as you really like the work but there's no objective criterion for being a master or anything like that. Um, so when someone says something like that, I just get a warm glow, not some big megalomaniacal glow. I get my megalomaniacal glow from other things. Um, but when someone says something like that to me, I get a glow just from that's nice that they really like it. You know, I, there's, no, there's no way you could prove or even really disprove that you're a master. Those are just words, you know? And it's too product, Focus, you know, art is about the process, about enjoying what you're doing. Everyone starts like a metal sheet. When you learn things, it's like hitting it with different tools. At first, it'll be obvious what you're hitting it with until it turns into your own twisted metal. Nice that you got a twisted metal reference in there. I see why you did that. That's all, that's all you wanted. You just wanted to reference twisted metal. You just wanted to make a video game reference with that highfalutin comment. Jesus. You can do work that anyone would hire you for, says Israel. I'm not sure. I think I'm missing that out of context. I don't know what you mean there. Would it be helpful to change your observer approach from I want to draw like that to I want to draw stuff like that, basically shifting from technique to subject? Uh, yeah, I think that would be good. At first blush, that seems right to me. Whom do you consider art gods, like people you think is the best artist, not necessarily your inspiration? Oh, yeah, it's... It's very personal. I mean, it's the people who I think are the best. There's no reason you should think they're the best. That's just me saying some of my favorite artists. And the problem with that list is that um, it, it'll change day to day. You know, I've loved so many people's art. Um, Michelangelo, you know, of course, is, is a huge... I don't know how he did it. You know, I, I'm, I'm just overawed by the quality of his work and especially how he got so good and did such amazing things with so little precedent. That's really amazing to me. I love Raphael. Um, I think Da Vinci's notebooks are really cool. I'm not much for his paintings or anything like that, but um, his notebooks are really cool. Um, Sargent, amazing. I like Bouguereau, Bougereau. I like John William Waterhouse. I like Sir Lawrence Almatadema. More contemporary people, Ernst Fuchs, H.R. Giger, um, in the entertainment world, I love, uh, I was very inspired by artists like Marco Djurjevic, Wes Burt, Carlos Huante, um, but I'm, I'm just leaving out so many people here, you know? I think Claire Wendling might be one of the best drafts people alive. Craig Mullins, of course, Jamie Jones. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot. That's a huge list. I just saw one of your TikToks on my For You page. Apologies. <laughs> Deepest apologies.
those were a lot of fun to make, but uh, I'm taking a break for those because I took all the apps off my phone. Taking some me time. YouTube's all right because it's not really a social media network, you know. I think it's more wholesome to be here sharing than it is to be consuming, but yeah, I took all that stuff off my phone, so I'm not really engaging with it right now. I see blues and greens in the shadows. The camera might might actually be doing that, but it's probably just um, your mind looking for color. And uh, I think the visual si system actually is constantly flipping color temperature um, readings. I think I remember learning that at one point uh, in order to always have a method of contrast even in low light situations. So that might be your eyes doing that as well. What is your opinion of JC Leyendecker? He belongs on that list. I looked at a lot of Leyendecker back in the day. He's a great, great artist. Steven, I just turned 21. Do you have any words of wisdom for me? You know, the number one regret that I, like a theme of regrets that I see people having is living the life other people wanted them to live instead of living the life the way they wanted. Um, just trust yourself. That's what the world needs more than anything else. Um, that doesn't mean be impulsive. You know, you can trust yourself. You can trust yourself but still be uh, slow to action and thoughtful. Um, but, yeah, really find a way to trust yourself. You know, have, have confidence that you are vaster than you know and that your, your instincts, your feelings, and the things that you have inside and your, your impulses that what other people say are not for you and things like that are not, not misguided but important. And um, like I said, that doesn't mean just react to them all the time, but honor them. I think especially for an artist, that is um, quite important. I think that's very important for an artist. Uh, and I think it's a good thing to get used to doing early on. Um, the world is very inclined to make you boring as an artist. The, um, the incentives that are out there are much more amenable for people who want to be unctuous, obsequious, servile little quims that will just do anything that anyone will throw them a penny for. And um, this undoes the whole endeavor. This destroys the heart of art. So get used to surviving um, in solitude. Get used to not being understood. Become good company for yourself. Develop your own inner steel, and this will serve you well throughout the years. Now's the time to do it. You're young. You're flying under people's radars. Expectations are low. Take advantage. Would you say your channel is good for beginners too? Um, well, beginners have certainly derived a lot of value from it. Um, now that uh, now that time has come on and I've heard from many of them. But um, my channel was actually started with uh, more advanced practitioners. 
in mind. Um, there's no videos on my channel that are like, here's how to draw a hand. Um, my, my channel is very much focused on surviving the internal mental warfare that occurs when you try to be an artist. Um, that's why I started it. Um, and to fix very particular problems about how we lose our sense of joy as the years ebb on and how easy it is to become jaded, cynical, burnt out, and sad, which uh, we're all guilty of from time to time, I think. And um, yeah, if you're, if, so it's not, no, it's not good for beginners if uh, none of that sounds relevant or interesting to you. If you're just looking for uh, how to draw hair, uh, go elsewhere, I would say. I would say that I'm most struggling with this, what you just said, the mental war of being an artist. There you go. You know, the thing is that those feelings can occur for everybody. When you're a beginner, when you're a master, when you're intermediate, it doesn't matter. So if, um, if you have those feelings at any point, yes, I think the channel is good for you. It's for a particular type or someone going through a particular phase. I think in many respects, the things that I say on this channel are medicinal, hopefully. Um, it would be a great honor to me if the things that I say or talk about would fix the problems for you, and then you would have no need for me anymore and never listen to me again. Um, that may damage my use, that may damage me in the algorithm, but in my heart, what more could I want for someone? <laughs> what I wish for you is that there would be no more pain, no more confusion around art, and you can blithely go off and draw to your heart's total merriment forever. which Ephraim says, I right, bye, Stephen. Goodbye, Ephraim. Enjoy the rest of your life. What do you recommend for balancing the practice of art and making art? Hmm? For balancing the practice of art and making art. They're the same thing. Do you mean like practicing skills and doing creative pictures? Yeah, my, it depends on the individual, but my usual prescription is a 50-50 split. Whatever time you have, split it down the middle. And if you struggle to split it down the middle, prioritize the making of your art and subordinate the skills-based practice.
Sending you much love, Stephen. Keep on pushing the true values of art and spreading positivity. I will try. Wish I could draw. I'd never stop. You can draw. You just already assume you will be dissatisfied. So I think you should pick up uh, a pencil and try it. <laughs> How do I draw hair and hands? Since Alan Warren's. For this, I have no answer. Steven, how can I draw big anime eyes? If only the dark secrets of that incredible skill were available to me. Alas, I am so clumsy and fat-fingered that I cannot draw big anime eyes. Question, if the only value in our art to the industry is how efficient we can give the results out, are there any that still respect how delicate art making can be? Yeah, it's not the only value. Um, there are still, it's particular places, particular studios, firms, projects, things like that. They will still, perhaps not always, right? But when it is appropriate for what they're doing, for what they're doing, they will still um, value just getting excellent product, right? If it, if that excellent product is on the other side of a very inefficient process, it will always, almost, almost always still frustrate them, but they might still be willing to tolerate it. Um, so it, it just, it varies from place to place. I will admit that yes, you know, just because of the incentives around the way these markets have been designed and capitalism, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah, it w they will most places, the standard will be valuing efficiency, but it's not everywhere. And if you you want to be in one of those places that really values um, the high quality product, you will need to put in a lot of work to find it and to carve out your place for it. It's not an easy thing, I must say. But yeah, I don't want to give the impression that that doesn't exist at all. It does exist. Yonat says, I want to be a manga artist, but I don't know if I should send ideas to publishers having almost no experience in creating comics or just upload them online waiting to be discovered. Any advice? See, I don't, I don't know much about comics. Um, my gut impression off of seeing other people tackle comics and things like that is that it's probably a better idea to put your stuff online and get discovered. The people who I've seen take off with that stuff, usually it's like, the companies just have so many people to choose from that it's easy for them to just be like, let's see who did a successful Kickstarter with an original idea. We know they're hardworking, we know they're creative, their comic took off, let's just offer them whatever. You know, it's just, it's an easy shot in the bucket for them, like why wouldn't they do that, you know? but. I am a little bit talking out of my ass. I'm not a comics expert, you know. I'm not really big in, into that world. That's just what my as a as an observer and a vaguely informed observer, that's what I've seen. Finding you as a beginner, I will say your channel completely helped me assess myself and how to navigate in ways that would make me enjoy art to the fullest. I'd argue that it's more important than fundamental chasing. Thank you, Mel. You're very kind. I'm glad you feel that way. That's what I try to do. How do you keep consistency when drawing a figure's head from different angles, realist way? When just a minor proportion error distance between eyes, for example, can completely change a person's face. If it's for like a character or something that you're doing for a project, my usual advice is sculpt it in clay. If, if you really understand what that character looks like, even if you're not a sculptor, you'll be able to sculpt it in clay. If you fail to, you know, after a little bit of familiarity with this is a hard clay, this is a soft clay, like very little, technical knowledge about how clay works. Um, if you simply cannot put a basic clay version of it together, it's not because you're bad at sculpting, it's because you don't understand the shape of your character. Or you have tricked yourself into thinking your character has appealing shapes from the drawing, and then when you go to sculpt it, you realize that it's a mushy, walnutty mess um, because you didn't actually refine it. So. Um, if you actually have a good character, something that you understand clearly, you'll be able to sculpt it. And I think you should um, sculpt 
it. And then you just have it permanently. You can put them up on a shelf somewhere and whenever you need that character, you can just rotate it around. Um, I have some 3D knowledge. So when I have needed to do stuff like that, I just do it in ZBrush, right? But clay is perfectly good. This is how I feel in my bed in the morning, embraced by the old ones. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. Now that's a good feeling right there. I love waking up with cosmic thoughts on the mind. This is actually it's probably a pretty bad idea to do this dark area in this way because these are supposed to be pretty complex shapes and probably hard to actually sculpt them out and design them with this much graphite down. That was probably an error, but that's all right. I'll learn to live with it. Hello, Joseph. What up, fam? What you drawing today? Just a cute, kinky anime cat girl. Just keeping it light. Trying to get better at that. Trying to get better at kinky cat girls. Found this video by mistake, but I don't regret clicking it. Welcome. The gods have surely guided you here. It could only be fate that would put us together. Does it make sense to make art if you knew no one would ever look at it? Yeah, there's a lot of uh, internal reasons to make art. It makes perfect sense to make it, even if you're never going to share it or no one's ever going to see it. It's good for the soul. It's like if you feel the impulse to make it at all, you probably should make it.
How clear of an image do you have when making these illustrations? And is being able to put exactly what you have in your head on paper a level you're supposed to reach? Uh, I don't have a clear image. I'm mostly just reacting to what I put down on the page. Um, and I don't think it's a level you need to reach. I can visualize things very clearly in my head, but I very rarely like actively do while I draw. I mostly just react to my sketch as I do it. And just react line to line, shape to shape, feeling to feeling. How did you learn to draw anatomy so well? A ridiculous amount of practice, my friend. A ridiculous amount of practice. You'd hardly believe it if I told you. And even if I tried to list everything I did, I wouldn't remember half of it. Obviously, step one is uh, to copy the entire George Bridgman anatomy book in one night. In one fevered night. Lo, that I could forget the things that I learned on that one fateful night. But the gods have seen fit to curse me with human memory and force me to remember the dark secrets contained therein. Lo, that cursed book lay upon my desk month after month, calling me to it with a sinister chiming, which I simply could not ignore. The ritual is barely there, a clouded display of smoke and mirror, half-remembered fever dream and lost impression of fate's emotion, sensation, and perception. When I was done, roused as if from a coma, there, floating above the book, I saw it, the monstrosity, the very embodiments of the future that I had lain before. It scooped me up in its embracing tentacles, shimmering all over with opalescent color, writhing from it every kind of monstrous mandible and proboscis. And I must admit that though I was afeared, though I was scared, lost in horrors, unbelievable, I must admit I was slightly intrigued. I believe the beast registered this from me. It gave me a shy wink, and before I knew it, I was lost in cosmic pleasures beyond explanation. It tugged urgently at me, my most secret places. And though I was loath to admit that I was enjoying what was happening, I could not help but open myself to every searching cilia, to every probing, seeking, monstrous appendage. And when we were done, we lay there, post-coital in the most cosmic of ways, stared deeply into each other's many, many eyes, and agreed to meet forthwith, thereupon, every night, until love of the darkest sort would be exhausted. I just want you to know that's, that's all I do all day when I'm alone. <laughs> I just, when I'm not on stream, I just walk around my house all day saying things like that to myself. Yeah, I'm not the, not the coolest person. <laughs>
Mm-hmm. Joe says, I saw that shit coming, no pun intended. Well, you would. Joseph knows me. He knows my secret heart. He knows that for all of my pretensions and projected prudishness, all I really want to do is write erotic, Lovecraftian love, fi- love fiction. Love fiction, fan fiction. How often do you apologize to your wife for going off on rants? Uh, No apology. (laughs) She's a saint for suffering me, but we're, we're well past the point of apology now. She sort of just lets me go, you know? She's doing something important on her phone, like planning something or dealing with uh, some actual practical thing that we need to get done. And she just completely tunes me out as I babble in the corner. She's just trying to plan like a barbecue or something while I'm sitting, sitting in the corner saying out loud just the, the worst things. Just like, so loved by a beast beyond mortal ken, how could I keep myself from erupting suddenly? She, she doesn't even register. it. My sister has the same policy. They don't even know what I'm doing half the time. <laughs> When you draw from imagination, you're using your knowledge and muscle memory of what you have already practiced, like anatomy study. Or you visualize that in your mind and put the maximum control in your hand and put the shape on paper. Sorry for my English. The first one. I'm using my knowledge of anatomy and, uh, and muscle memory. I very rarely try to... I, ne- I really never try to like trace something out of my mind. I don't, I don't think that's actually... Like, what does that mean? <laughs> you know, what do people think that means? Like... At best, it would always be a guide, you know? Your mind cannot, you you can't literally be following some outline that you're seeing on the second monitor of your brain. It's just like, it's not, that's not actually what's going on. How do you know that all the things you you say walking in your house, it's not just part of a ritual to invoke a cosmic creature, Steve? Would that I could. Bring it on, baby. The body is ready. And I will perform. Do you think I wouldn't give it up to a Lovecraftian monster? You don't know me. That just lets me know that you, you have no idea who I am. I'm telling you, man, if Yogg Shoggoth shows up in this, this bedroom, he picked the right place. I'll be like, well, well, well. You have no idea what's in store for you.
It ain't going down like that. Yog Shagath and I are not leaving that situation on platonic terms. Steven, do you have a creative process to make drawings like these? It's honestly incredible. I mean, the, the process would, would by definition be kind of loose, you know I mean? At this point, drawings like these are very um, intuitive for me, you know? I just rolled out of bed and got kicking on this one with my morning coffee, which is my favorite ritual, you know? Just get my coffee out of the carafe, crack open the sketchbook. The day feels fresh, new. I have not accrued a patina of disappointments yet. I just sketch away. But it's all very freeform, very relaxed, very happy. I would say joy is a very important part of the process. Definitely a lot of fun. Keeps your drawing. I've already got, what is it? Let me see that. Three hours and going on 10 minutes of drawing on the clock, even though it's only 11 a.m. in New York City. And probably only like two hours of that have been um, extemporaneous examples of a. Uh, having sex with Lovecraftian monstrosities. I probably only spent two hours of that time doing that. Do you believe in drawing in your head? I do this before going to sleep, and it's funny how the things I can't draw in real life, I can't do them in my head neither. Um, I mean, I, I just think of that as visualizing images in the head. I don't, I don't, um, I've done it before just on larks, but I've never made a habit of like actively pretending I'm building something up line by line in my mind. It's like, that's a fun game to play, and if it works for you, that's cool, but um, I'm not really sure what, um, if that works or what the ultimate goal there would be. I'd rather use that time to just cycle through many mental images and try to conjure something I'm interested in. Can I send my drawings? I don't really have anywhere for people to send me drawings for stream or anything like that. On stream, I'm really just focused on doing my stuff. I don't really do feedback on here. New York City, Stephen either has a huge penthouse or he and his wife sleep in a bunk bed. Well, we don't sleep in a bunk bed, but I am desperately trying to move. I would definitely like more space. Do have a nice big bed though. At least I've got that. Not huge, I just have a queen, but you know what I mean. You can't even take that for granted in a place like New York.
New York apartment listings, it's like, you could fit a queen in this bedroom. It's like, yeah, nothing else. <laughs> Who wants literally just a mattress inside of a room? <laughs> like a prison cell. At least you can get yourself some nice $9 lattes in New York City. Well, you know. I know the spots around me. I can get a $6 latte. I know where to go to get a $6 latte. Would you consider your style fantasy art, Steven? Uh, I mean, it is fantastical. I'm just drawing stuff out of my head and stuff that doesn't exist. But I think when most people use the word fantasy, they tend to think of medieval stuff like swords and so sword and sorcery and Dungeons and Dragons and stuff like that. So um, I think technically fantasy fits the bill, but I don't think that's what most people would think of, you know? I don't really think of my style in terms of a name or anything like that. I just draw what I like to draw. Big enough for the Lovecraftian horror. Look, as they say, it's not about the size of the boat. It's about how willing you are to engage in occult and arcane rituals that please the esoteric horror that is consuming you. And that is touching not just your body, but your spirit form in the most uncouth and unacceptable ways. Why you develop this particular style, what you love of it? Why do you love anything that you love? How sure are you that you understand why you are attracted to some people? Why you love your spar spouse or your partner? Why do you love the kind of music that you love? Why do you find certain views, certain aesthetics more lovely than another one? We can make ad hoc, retrospective reasonings for these things, but can we ever prove that that is really the case? And the heart wants what it wants. We love what we want to love. And our preferences, desires, and cravings arise from a mystery behind the eyes that nobody understands. Can you introduce me to that monster? Hands off, he's mine. Don't try to get in the way of me and my abomination. Goodbye, battle ready, babe. Hi, Steven. How you doing after a long time? I'm good. Just plugging away. Drawing, talking about art, thinking about art, making art, teaching art. 
doing feedback, making courses, surviving, surviving, surviving. What about you? How you doing? What's your lighting setup? I have two soft boxes on either side of my desk. They're just kind of pointing at a particular like grazing angle into the general area so that they don't bounce that much glare back up into the camera. It's not the ideal setup if you're avoiding graphite glare, but um, it's very difficult to set up the ideal setup. And it's actually rather lacking in flexibility kind of makes you stuck. You have to never mess with the setup. Also want to say I really love and I have huge respect for your art. Thank you so much, Taz Dude. Wait, I'm actually dealing with pleasing cosmic entities who visit me, Stephen. How do you know about this and where can I learn more? I mean, you know, we've all been there. We've all had to be the nightly erotic visit of some esoteric abomination for some period. You know, we've all been there. Sometimes a writhing, grabastic, vaguely coherent amalgamation of limbs, flesh, spiritual phalanges, proboscis, mandibles, and glistening, glistening guard plates just decides to apparate every, every evening around 3 a.m. and uh, demand some sort of physical and mental communion of a depth and intimacy that uh, would scar the priests, vicars, and bishops of our world. And um, at that point, what option do you have but to um, strap on your most libidinous and rapacious form of desire and perform for the great entity, lest your soul, of course, be cast back into the most primordial state from which it arose? We've all been there. <laughs> 3 a.m. exactly. Always 3 a.m. Showtime. Break it off so nasty the angels themselves will have to avert their eyes. I'm not sure what's more impressive, your art skills or your command of the English language. 
it's the art skills. I believe I'm dealing with the eighth sphere entities and it happens again at 7 a.m. I guess before the entities head off to work and after they've had their morning coffee. Yeah, sounds about right. Wear a rubber. Dakota Sim Simonson says newbie. <laughs> you only slander yourself with those words. Yes, to call me a newbie is only to reveal the depth of your ignorance. I would say, how dare you, but your choice of words alone has already explained to me exactly why you would dare. Because you are, first and foremost, a fool. The answer was quite satisfactory, but I'm also really curious because your style blends elements from academic art, but reinterpreted in a completely different manner. Why you developed it like so? Because that's what I wanted. I mean, I went after all that stuff purposefully, you know? I went for the academic. I hunted for the dark secrets of representation. Went to the ateliers, went to the best teachers in the world. Ah, my taste is eclectic, you know? I picked and chose from the styles that I loved and combined them. In fact, I made combinations of styles that the great teachers of my time would have said were not just impossible, but entirely undesirable. Concoctions and amalgamations of form that would surely only work to enrage and disturb the general populace. But all I could deduce from their worries and their reticences was their complete lack of imagination. Suffice to say, I've always trusted myself enough to venture where others would dare not trust. The fruits of these obscure endeavors speak for themselves, I'm sure. I meant no harm, I'm new to your channel. I know, I was just messing with you. Happy to have you here. I just needed something to riff off. How much do you care for the underlying abstract structure of your drawings, the flow, force, the different rhythms, versus the representational side of an image? Which one does the heavy lifting? Uh, you know, for my guts, which is like what I think is going on in a drawing is not necessarily the way others experience my drawing, but for me, it's more about the, the abstract structure. But that's just not, that doesn't mean that's the way it's going to land for other people. Continue for a few more minutes and a fedora will naturally appear on your head. Yeah, a fedora will appear and a D&D &D table will apparate before me. And a deeply bored, deeply bored D&D &D crew will appear as well. What's the vibe on your Discord? Very friendly. Don't ruin it. <laughs> People on my Discord are extremely nice.
And that's because we all just want to be happy while we draw. Look, I don't know why somebody has to be drilling, sawing right outside my window right now. I don't even know if you guys can hear that, but it's starting to drive me a little bit crazy. I love the short video you did on shading on Proco. It was really helpful. Oh, I'm glad you liked it. Ah ha ha ha, you are like Dali. The whole, your whole person is your work of art. Ah, uh -huh, thank you. Well, that's a very kind compliment. I don't think I'm up there on Dali's level, but. Do you think AI art can contribute in the animation industry? Um, it certainly will. I don't necessarily think it should. They're a sin against humanitarian values. <laughs> Get rid of them, why don't you? What are you up for today? Um, I don't know what you mean by that. What are you up for today? I'm just working away. I got a lot of stuff on the to-do list, I'll tell you that. I got a lot of stuff I gotta do after this stream. You have people chainsawing something right now, so if you're a pain, yeah, I don't know what that is. It sounds like someone's just using a, a big hand drill for just not, they're not stopping. Maybe they're sawing something. Hello everyone, gotta grab my sketchbook and work along. Nice way to start the day. Very happy for you, Jesse. Good that you have time to sketch. Welcome, welcome. Are you still doing freelance or is it just your own projects as of late? Just my own projects. Lately I've been given the jobs that come in away, giving them to students and stuff like that. Feels good because uh, there's a very strong tendency in art because uh, to put it mildly, it's a scarcity environment and artists uh, artists tend not to help each other. Uh, there's a tendency in art for artists to pull the ladder up behind them because uh, they think of everyone as competition and it uh, feels really good to not do that. feels good to 
put my money where my mouth is or maybe put my money into someone else's uh, pocket um, and live by my values and help people get jobs and give jobs away and stuff like that. Feels good. Hey Steven, have you ever worked for a company who told you they'd own whatever art you make on your personal time? I have not and I would not do that. That sounds like the kind of egregious thing uh, in a contract that um, if you just send it back to them with, I need this removed, they probably wouldn't even fight you on it. It sounds like one of those things that's just like, um, you know, in Hollywood, there's a, there might be a term for it, but it, it's sort of a thing in Hollywood where it's like, they put things like that in contracts just to find out if you're green, if you're putting on airs, if you actually don't know what the hell you're talking about, where it's like, if you don't come back on that article and say, what the hell are you doing? That's just like, that's just them getting a read on you. They just know they can take you for a ride and that you're a fool. Um, and, uh, you know, however much you're acting like a professional and all that, uh, you just revealed that you're just a scared little kid who's not paying attention. So, um, my gut tells me anything like that, that you would get from a company is, um, it's actually there specifically so that you'll show that you're not a toothless fool and, uh, and will come back and be like, what the hell is this? And they'd probably just strike it. And if they were serious, I would not. I personally would not work with them. I guess it's not an issue if you don't make personal work, but I would, I would never. And I would never want to support a company that thinks they can get away with crap like that. It's disgusting. And I do mean disgusting. I find that stuff to be uh, really just uh, abjectly against humanity and against human nature and just uh, indicative of some of the worst evils in the world. What do you think is the difference between illustration and painting? I mean, there doesn't really have to be. It's just different markets. It's just if you are more focused on working for hire or if you're more focused on um, like fine art painting, if that's what you mean. Um, yeah, it's just, if that is what you mean, the difference is just the markets. It's just, are you working for hire or are you working for um, or are you making pictures that you think will sell on your own and then marketing them or giving them to a gallery, et cetera, et cetera? Is it too insanely obsessive of me to have a goal to draw 30 portraits of my son for his birthday month? No, I mean, that sounds cute. I mean, as long as they're, you're not expecting them to be crazy every day, like don't, it'd be, it would really burn you out if you said each one had to be like super complicated or complete or something like that. But if you have tolerance in there for just a lot of them being just relatively quick sketches, I think that's fine. You know, it's just, uh, it's a hard challenge in general to draw something every day for a month, but um, it's definitely doable.
Just don't make it a, a chore, you know. Keep it fun, keep it light. Feels good to see yourself improve. Oh yeah, that's one of the, that is definitely one of the gifts that keeps on giving in art. It's just so addictive to see the little incremental improvements day by day. It's the same joy people get from an RPG video game. It's just like on a whole other drug level because it's like, oh shit, it's real. <laughs> it's very, um, very, very addictive. It's like I'm not I'm not in some simulation leveling up the stat that says I'm a good artist. I'm literally becoming a good artist. It's very, very addictive. Hi Stefano, are there any good anatomy drawing books you recommend? Um, for for anatomy reference, I always recommend Frank Delavier's Strength Training Anatomy. That one's for my money. That one's the clearest reference. But um, for like the draftsmanship stuff, like how to draw, how to actually draw the anatomy. Um, I think the classics are, are, are still some of the best out there. Like um, Bridgman's Anatomy is definitely very educational for like how to push it, how to understand the blocky structures of the overall masses of the body. There's not that many that actually deal with that in great depth and Bridgman does. You just need to like bear with how confusing it is. Um, I don't know, there's, there's a lot of really good video content out there too the books aren't necessarily for everybody. I think Proko's anatomy course is uh, very excellent. It's just so accessible because it's, um, it's videos, you know? It can animate and show examples and things like that. It's just uh, on another level. And so much of it is free on the Proko YouTube channel that it's like, it'd be crazy to not check it out. Hi, Steven. Do you sometimes create stories behind your drawings? Yeah. Yeah. They just kind of tend to emerge spontaneously after you've spent enough time staring at the drawing, you know? Hello, people. Hello. 
I like the thought of drawing images for every year of birth as a gift eventually. It's a flip book or larger work of 30 headshots. Yeah, I think she had a very good idea there. Steven, do you know anything about Scott Eden's anatomy course? Uh, not personally. I haven't taken it or anything like that. I'm sure it's excellent because uh, that's his like main thing, as I understand it. And he has so many other anatomy-based resources that he has made. Like, um, like he has his own anatomy photography archive that he's made of like athletes moving and doing actions. Um, he like updated the, et, the, uh, what is it? The, not the Proudhon, the, um, there's a famous Ecorche that he updated himself. Like he seems very, very serious about it. So I'm sure it's excellent, but I can't say I know anything about it from, um, personal experience. I don't think I know anyone who's taken it either. Probably someone in the chat has taken it and they can let you know. I would be amazed if it wasn't good. <laughs> I've used those other resources, like um, the anatomy photos he has and, uh, and that Ecorche, and they're all great, so. I'm sure his prime product is only better. Finishing my unfinished sketch. Thank you, Stephen. Way to go, Zane. Go get him. I'm from Russia. Where are you from, Stephen? I'm from New York City. From New York, New York. Greetings, greetings. The Anatomy for Sculptors book is pretty good. I have the I have a I have that one. I wouldn't say I've like I got it much, you know. I got it much later, sort of when I was like out of my intense anatomy learning period, so I haven't like gone through it with a like very closely, but I've used it as reference several times and flipped through all of it and uh, it seems of excellent quality. It would have been a favorite, I'm sure, if it had been out when I was um, really in the throes of my focused anatomy study. Steven, how long did it take you to learn anatomy and then how to change that anatomy to what you want to draw? Well, you don't, it's not like you learn it and then you're done, you know, it, it is an ongoing process. Um, but I would say that my really strong, like that was a primary focus period was probably two years. And I don't mean just figure drawing. I, I mean, or I don't mean figure drawing. I mean anatomy, like the individual muscles, where they come from, where they go, what they do, their shapes, their forms, 
the way they overlap and things like that. That real specific anatomy knowledge, not figure drawing at large is what I mean by probably like a two year-ish period was like the, the core learning period. But figure drawing is so vast beyond that, that um, I would say that started 16 years ago and is ongoing. <laughs> Ooh, I'm getting hungry, man. We're going to stay on for a bit longer. Because I'm coming up on my four-hour mark here. And as many people know, that's where I like to start cutting it off. Otherwise, I risk burnout. I'd rather stop when uh, I'm excited about drawing so that I'm excited to come back the next day. Let's darken some of these areas that need darkening here. Steven, are you watching Hot D? Yes, I am. I think it's quite good. I'm impressed. It's not, it doesn't have its claws in me like the way uh, Game of Thrones did, but um, it's good. It's good. They did a good job. I like your ideas. How do you imagine all this? Are you a game designer or something else? Well, I have been a game designer. I've worked on video games before and stuff like that. How do I imagine all this? I don't know how to answer that, you know? It's just uh, comfort, experience, you know? An overactive, febrile imagination, you know? There's no, there's very little accounting for it, I would say. That takes a lot of discipline to leave the art party while it's still fun. Well, it's necessary when you're in it for the long haul, man. You gotta be disciplined like that. Know thyself. Ooh, getting so hungry. Hi, Steven. Thanks for sharing your works and thoughts. Your channel is motivating me to draw more. Hooray! I'm happy to catch a live stream since I'm a fan. Since I'm far from you, France. Well... Uh, hello from New York to France. You know, we have that statue that you gave us still. Yeah, I bet you thought we got rid of it. No, never. Th we never threw it out. That statue you gave us that long time ago, we still got it. We've actually got it. We have it like out. We have it out and like, uh, like we really, we show it off, you know, like it's not like in a box somewhere. We really, we have it out. We, people see it, you know, people see it. So thanks for that. Janos Garash says, hi, greetings from Portugal. Hope you're doing well. I'm doing well, man. How are you? How's THU? Is it over? You're just hanging out in Portugal afterwards? I don't, I don't, I didn't catch when THU was starting. I'm assuming you're over there for THU. Speaking of discipline, I would like it if you, 
if you, Stephen the Great and Terrible, can wish me luck on completing Inktober this year, also hoping to make a video about it afterwards. Daryl Grant, you are receiving the incredibly powerful, totally committal Stephen Zappata blessing of completing Inktober 2022. With the binding of this blessing, it will be completely impossible for you to miss a day or to not achieve your goals. No negating Stephen Blessing or evil meme that you encounter on the internet can prevent this blessing from taking hold, and it will be with you until the end of Inktober. THU was amazing. I stayed a week longer for enjoying Portugal. Nice, man. Happy for you. Good for you, man. Enjoy it. That's great. I gotta go to Portugal. I gotta get out there. Greetings, Stephen. How many hours are we in on this Triumph and Peace? Uh, we're coming up on four. Four hours on this guy. It's a good plan. I like it. I don't know if, um, you know, it's a bit, it's quite a bit different from the first ideas or the first versions of this idea, but it feels me. I like it. Um, and, um, I don't know if I'll maybe use this as an access drawing and now go do it even bigger, more elaborate on maybe an 18 by 24 or a 14 by 17, or if we will just leave it as is, as a happy, sketch and um, the complete idea on its own. We will see. I'll follow my heart on that. Got to rest on it. Thanks, Janos. I feel the determination rising already. Thank you. No problem, Daryl. Did a ton of videos here. We'll all be on my YouTube. Nice. Everyone go check out Janosch's YouTube. He's more helpful than I am. He actually, you know, teaches art techniques. Instead of just uh, talking about making love to love Lovecraftian monstrosities. You know, it's like, pick your poison, man. <laughs> it's up to you. I'm in love with your drawings. Thank you, Aslan. What will it take for a drawing to be considered one of the all-time 100? For me, I don't know. You just know it when you have it. For me, I know that I've done one of the pictures I really care about where when I'm done, I'm like... It's difficult to put into words, but it feels like... Ah, yes. I'm glad that picture exists. Like, I'm... Like, I wanted to see that picture. You know, like... I know I did it if when I'm done, I'm like, if another artist had done this one, I would have wanted to thank them for it. I would have been like, that's such a nice, good thing that I didn't know I wanted that. When I, when I feel that, I'm like, that's one of them. I really care about that picture. I'm, it's like, it's almost like you're in relationship to yourself. It's like, I'm the maker, but I'm also a fan of art still. And it's like the part of me that is the fan of art is thanking the part of me that is a maker of art for making that one. It's a very, it's a special feeling.
I just started reading Paradise Lost after being inspired by the channel. Seems like a divine oversight to leave the key to hell with one of the hellish spiritual denizens of hell. Yeah, bit of an oversight. Also that that particular denizen happens to be Satan's lover and daughter? It's like, who would be more susceptible to manipulation by this man? <laughs> Bit of an oversight. Bit of an oversight. It's almost like God wanted it to happen. Lose friends, make enemies. to get a more clear value system going on in this dark area down here. I needed to vignette out to darkness, but I need within that vignette, I need the values to separate a little bit more clearly than what's going on. I've been focusing on learning through making art rather than studies. Should I stop to do studies when I can't draw something right slash in an appealing way, or should I dedicate time for it. Thanks. It's perfectly fine to um, do your studying in relation to specific problems in pictures that you're making. I think that's quite healthy, actually. I would ride that train for as long as you can bear it. I don't think there's any problem with that. And the great thing about that is that you know that everything that you're study, studying is directly relevant to your portfolio, which is a really nice place to be in. Joe says to Daryl, Daryl Grant said, I miss Lovecraftian scoodly pooping. It's, it's like y'all knew I was going to be late today. Yeah, dude, Steve serve, started waxing poetically about Eldritch lo Beast Love. I mean, just guys, like, don't, stop being such prudes, all right? It's okay to want to have sex with Cthulhu. I mean, he wrote him hot. Like, it's Love's, Lovecraft's fault. Like, he made him so, like that line where he says, Great Lord Cthulhu slid greasily into the sea. It's like, my man, how am I not gonna, you know, you just, I mean, it's, I want to kiss a little bit, you know, I just want to like get the, get the big squid beak with like all the big tentacles, just like all flickering all around, just like, Like, that's normal. Like, that's just... I mean, he wrote it hot, you know? You're just you're reacting to the intended artistic experience. What's confusing? Yeah. 
It's like, I know what I want him to slide greasily into. All right, I took it too far. I know I, I, know I took it too far with that one. That was beneath me. It was beneath me. Just like, I'm going to be beneath him. All right, you know, I'm, I'm stuck on a, I'm stuck on it. So I can't, I can't, I just can't stop. I just can't stop. In, I'm in my third week of Art Center. It's going fast. Oh, 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 it's gonna go fast. Better hold on tight. Get ready to white knuckle it for the next four years. <laughs> Don't worry. Me and the rest of the alumni are rooting for you, brother. <laughs> I didn't graduate. I didn't graduate. Wonderful. You sound like H.R. Giger. Did I sound like him when I was doing that? I don't remember what Giger sounds like. I've heard a few interviews with him, but I don't quite remember. Do you think through the drawing or does the idea come in the process of drawing? I mean the details. It comes in the process. It's very like intuitive and reacting to things. To be fair, artists have always made Cthulhu pretty dumpy in their illustrations. That's like so, big mistake number one. I mean, it's, it's in the subtext. This is a extremely sexy arcane beast, you know? Every, every little bit of him should be dripping cosmic sensuality. <laughs> noon question. It's, oh, it is noon. Shit. <laughs> it, is, it is noon. All right. No, you got me. I mean, you got me. Noon question. When you make your big shadows, how can you make them smoother and not so stretchy? Sorry for the bad English. I don't, I'm not sure what you mean by that. I'm not sure what you mean by that. If you want my full thoughts on shadows, you can check out, um, some of my, my, um, my tutorial videos. Um, I, cover a, I cover a lot of it in Secrets of Shading. And if you want to get really practical with it and just get hands on and really refine your sense of form, you get the course. You check out Form From Imagination at formfromimagination.com. Mm, sexy Cthulhu. It's like the sexy part is redundant. It's implied. It's Cthulhu. Cthulhu. It's totally redundant to call him sexy. He's supposed to be sexy. We all get it. Savion Pugh says, wait, you didn't graduate art school? No. I did all, I did all four years there. Um, I, had a, I had just a semester left. I had to do my graduation semester. I think so, yeah. I, I didn't do like my final portfolio prep class and do the grad show, but I did all four years there. I did the curriculum. I just... Um, I got a job before I got out of school and um, I needed the money and the money was good and I didn't, I didn't want to risk, you know, going on a sabbatical and the job not being there. So I just stayed at work. Is there a term I'm unaware of for identifying as sexually attracted to demons? It probably should be something like de demisexual or something, but that's already taken. Got to think of something else. The fact that you sound like Patrick Bateman saying it makes it seem even more normal. It is normal. Fun fact, xenomorphs were his wet dream. Makes perfect sense to me. What kind of art is your least favorite art? Just like anodyne market art that people did just because they felt like they had to or they should. the kind of art I hate. It's not about what's, it's not about the product. It's like, I, I hate art that is made for bad reasons. That's what I hate. Aslan says, when I first saw your drawings, I thought your style was very nice, specific. Sorry, I'm using a translator. Thank you. Thank you for the kind mm -hmm. words. I'm glad you think so. All right, everybody, I'm going to wrap up here because uh, I've hit my, my uh, self-imposed 
limit there, and I'm very unusually hungry today, so I'm gonna go have a nice big lunch. Um, but let's see, let's wrap up here. Yo, Steven, how you doing? Karem, I'm doing good. Had a nice morning drawing, love to draw. Very happy. What's your opinion on cold showers? Um, sometimes it's just like, after a run, what's better than a cold shower? Like when you've worked up a sweat like a horse, running for like an hour, you just, it's like 90 degrees outside and you're just dripping like, oh, what's better than a cold shower, a freezing cold shower? There's nothing better than that. All right, everybody, I'm gonna wrap up. If anybody has any last quick questions or anything like that. Goodbye, Nero. Goodbye, Bidmore. Goodbye, Dio and P. Goodbye, Jesse. Goodbye, <coughs> Goodbye, Light Lolliet. Goodbye, Bogdan Mircea. Goodbye, Karem. Goodbye, Aslan. Goodbye, Gabriel Went. Goodbye, Ephraim. Goodbye, Yolo. Goodbye, Faux Turkey. Goodbye, Nero. Goodbye, Samuel Coomer. I don't know if I'm done with I'll come back to this one. I like it. It, it needs... I want to take it a bit further, though. It's not... I don't think I'm willing to abandon it just yet. So don't forget, everybody, you know, have fun out there. Keep drawing. Be glad. Um, if your dad's an asshole, tell him he's an asshole. Um, never take your car to the mechanic. They're breaking it every time that they uh, take a look at it. And um, if you find yourself in a heated, shameful tryst with a cosmic entity beyond mortal ken, try to find some room to enjoy it. You know, like explore new things, you know? Instead of getting caught up in all of the abject horror and the existential dread that that will, of course, necessitate, try to, you know, step back for a minute and start asking yourself, like, if I get a little creative here, a little more open-minded, what can I suck to get help this experience along? You know, like, you're an artist, right? Get creative. Open your mind a little bit. You know, there's a whole universe of possibilities and the heart is so wide and accepting. I'm gonna go.